Johnny Stratosphere. Hello and welcome to the Starship Jefferson. I am Captain Johnny Stratosphere. <laughs> This is my first mate, Fuzz Bucket. <laughs> We're flying through the galaxy, discovering God's truth everywhere we go. Let's zoom a zoom. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Johnny Stratosphere in Sacrifice is twice as nice. Oh, hey, guys and gals. Captain Johnny Stratosphere here. Those of you who weren't with us last time, let me bring you up to speed. Uh, I got it all registered on my memory disk right here. Hang on. Hang on. You see, my co-pilot Fuzzbucket was piloting our new ship when I got mad at him for chewing on my fuzzy dice. So FB left in our escape pod and crash landed on the forgotten planet of Danza where he was captured by Negative Ned. No, no, an asteroid. Negative Ned said I had to give him something cool to rescue FB, but nothing I had was cool enough for him. So Ned said that me and Fuzz Bucket would be separated forever. What am I gonna do? Fuzz bucket. What is that sound? Is that disco? Oh yeah! <laughs> Captain Gigabob is in the house. That is the coolest spaceship ever. Woo! Hey there, spaceman. <laughs> Check out the body karate on that ride. I call it the Yeah You Are. Captain Gigabob, it's me. Johnny Stratosphere! Hey, where's your little six-legged friend? You know, fuzz racket, whatever. This guy named Negative Ned, he took him and Ned wants a ransom, but I don't have anything cool enough to give him. All right, well, we'll go get this negative guy. You go that way, and I'll go this way. Well, if you see this guy, give out a yell, like this. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Fuzz Bucket, where are you? Where are you? It's me, it's me. Fuzz Bucket. Oh, oh. Fuzz Bucket. Wait a second, how did you get free? I thought Ned wanted a ransom. <laughs> hmm, that's weird. Captain Gigabob. Oh yes. Fuzzbucket, he's been freed! Well, look there, my friend. You and your friend were separated. And now, you're united. <laughs> That's good news. Where's your ship? Oh, well, you see, I decided to walk. It's more dangerous that way. <laughs> oh, Space Ranger! Oh, Fuzzbucket, it is so good to be back together again! <laughs> I still don't get it, though. How in the world did you escape? Oh, this is stylish. What a trade. The fuzz bucket for the yeah, you are. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Ooh, what's this button say? Disco ball universe. Oh, oh my tum tum. Oh, oh, oh. Get ready for an amazing and true Bible story. After Jesus was arrested in the garden, he was tortured by the guards who held him. Then Jesus was sentenced to die on a cross because he was the Son of God. 
Jesus could have escaped the pain of death, but he chose to experience death as punishment for our sins so that we would not have to be punished for them. Hanging from the cross, Jesus asked his Father God to forgive all the people who had hurt him. Finally, he gave up his spirit into the heavens and died. Jesus' friends laid his body in a tomb. They rolled a huge rock in front of the entrance so that nobody could enter. All of Jesus' friends were sad. They thought they would be separated from Jesus forever. But guess what happened? Three days later, something incredible occurred. An angel of God descended from heaven. The angel moved the stone covering Jesus' tomb. Jesus was alive. Jesus sacrificed his life in order to take punishment for our sin. Because he was the Son of God, he also had the power to rise again and to heal our friendship with God in heaven. The Bible says that everyone has been caught by sin. When we sin, we're separated from God forever. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can give to fix that friendship. Jesus came on a stellar rescue mission so that you and I could have our friendship with God back again. Memory Max! Well, guys and gals, it's time for today's Memory Max! So everyone up on your feet, today's Memory Max is coming to you from Matthew 20, 28. Hey, that's great! Let's do that together, here we go. Matthew 20, 28. Hey, that's great! We're gonna spin our arms two times. Here we go. Four, even, I! Like that, do that with me. Four, even, I! The son of man, two pumps with the arm. The son of man, and we're gonna whisper, that's Jesus. Because the son of man, that's Jesus. And that's not in the Bible verse, but that's there just to kind of remind us who we're talking about. Let's do it from the top. Four, even, I, the son of man, that's Jesus. Came here not, let's do that together. Came here not to be served, we're gonna kneel down, to be served, but to serve others. Came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life. We're gonna kind of lay our life down. We're gonna put our other arm on top just like that and to give my life as a ransom for many and to give my life as a ransom for many. Let's do it from the top, Matthew 20, 28. Hey, that's great, here we go, ready? Matthew 20, 28. Hey, that's great! Fool, even I, the son of man, that's Jesus, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. All right, guys and gals, let's break it down. You know, that day when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, people were laying down palm branches because they thought, hey, here comes the new king. You know, king's a pretty cool position. Everybody serves you food, brings you your drink. But Jesus said, you know what, that's not why I came. I didn't come here to be served. I came here to serve other people. And not just to serve other people, but to lay my life down. God knew and Jesus understood that somebody had to pay the price for your sin, had to pay the price for my sin. And that, my friends, is why Jesus came. And when he came, he laid down his life so that you and I could have forgiveness for our sins and have a friendship with God again. Turn to the person next to you and say, 7-10 split. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love this! Space 
monkeys, Jetpack Julie back again with yet another propelling compass point. Look out below! Today, have I got a question for you. Do you know anyone who is afraid to say what they believe? I want you to share today's compass point with them. And it goes a little something like this. Say it and be saved. See, the Bible tells us if you use your mouth like this, like this, if you use your mouth, to confess your belief in Jesus, then you will be saved by Jesus. Say it and be saved. That is today's compass point. Say it with me. Say it and be saved. But seriously, when you say it, don't spray it. It's kind of grody. Not me. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. He died, he was buried, and he came back to life again. But here's the great thing. Jesus made a way for us to have a friendship with God every day. But there's a problem, friends. Yeah, there's a problem, all right. No Jesus, no friendship. The Bible says if we've got sin in our life, our relationship with God is non-existent. So here's my question for you guys and gals. Do you have sin? What is that sin? Selfish behavior? Sin. Talking back to your parents? Sin. Beating somebody up? Taking stuff that isn't yours? Deceiving someone with a lie? It's sin. 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 Turn to the person next to you and say, I smell some stinky sin. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So when you sniff that sin, you need to tell God about it. God, I am sorry that I have sinned against you. Ah, I realize it. I realize I've got sin in my life. God, will you forgive me? Then you believe. You believe that Jesus was God's own son. That Jesus came and he died and he came back to life again. And he did it because of you. He did it so that you and I can have our friendship with God restored once and for all. Then you commit your life to God. Don't live your life for you anymore. Because when you live your life for you, you live it selfishly. You don't care about anybody else but you. When you commit to follow Jesus, your friendship with God is restored. You can go to church, you can pray, you can learn more and more each day what it means to have a friendship with God. And that, my friends, is a friendship worth having forever. In fact, turn to the person next to you right now and say, I've got a forever friend.